So I, uh, I'm not quite sure exactly the first time I saw a crystal bache, but it was it was on an, it was it was online. Uh, there's very few of these in the world, um, and what initially drew me to it was the fact that I saw it and absolutely did not understand the object. So yeah, I was basically drawn to it by the mystery of it, and it seemed like a really interesting challenge. Uh, and from there, I started to seriously kind of explore what this, uh, how this might work and how I might build one. And initially, I thought it would take me a month. Uh, and uh, six months later, I was still scratching my head at the tuning. Um, My name is Rob Funkhauser, and I'm an Indianapolis-based experimental composer, instrument builder, and performer. I started making music in junior high school, uh, playing drums, hoping to join a band with some of my friends who were all learning guitar. And um, then in high school, I uh, started playing in band and orchestra and listening to a lot of classical music. Went to Indiana University and um, studied music in the background as I studied philosophy. Afterwards, I did end up coming back to the institution, as it were, and uh, got a master's degree in music composition from Butler University. I started building my own instruments because, uh, frankly, instruments are rather expensive to buy. And uh, on into college, I started really uh, having a desire to experiment with a lot of different kinds of sounds um, beyond you know, my normal drum set. And then eventually started to get fascinated with instrument design itself. Um, I started building things out of household objects like metal mixing bowls, um, resonant pieces of metal I could find, pieces of wood, and then from there it branched out into um, you know, a minor obsession with sort of seeking out uh, instruments that I could look at, learn about, and, um, and then extrapolate my own designs. So a lot of the early years were copying designs for things like kalimbas and perfecting how to tune those, and then um, as time has gone on, I've worked on worked a little bit with electronics, and um, throughout all of it, instrument building has sort of been a vehicle for me to understand the world around me a bit better, whether it be programming a synth on the computer or you know learning how to tune a gong, for example. For a long time, I you know you could find some grainy videos on YouTube and. Um, that was about it. Uh, I did learn the name uh, from the description in a video one time um, called a Crystal Bache. And the Bache brothers were um, these French sculptors. They were exploring these sort of friction-based instruments. Um, the, the concert one, sort of like what I'm doing where there's multiple notes and a scale, was a rather late thing that they started doing. Um, and to my knowledge, the Bache brothers themselves maybe only built four or five big concert instruments. They built a lot of sculptures, but uh, in terms of thinking of it as a concert instrument, uh, they built far fewer. And it's got, you know, pieces of glass coming off these big pieces of metal and sound is happening somehow. There was something about this that was uniquely interesting to me because it was something that I knew when I was finished, I would have never seen it before in person. Um, the, the instruments themselves are pretty few and far between, um, even the ones made by the original guys. So really, this was the easiest way for me to experience this instrument uh, in my house. When I started making the instrument, I had a goal of one month uh, from start to finish. I thought I had all the parts I needed. Then I think it was about seven months later that I felt like I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and then after about eight months, I played my first show with it. So at that point, all the notes were working uh, to a reasonable degree and, um, and things were pretty steady. The way this instrument works is that we've got this metal plate down here, which acts as the resonator. And then we've got these metal rods that have been tuned after a fashion um, by using these weights to stop the vibration at a certain point um, and then uh, positioning these to generate vibration. So basically I take one of these rods and it goes in 
and then I've got two wrenches that are the same so I can tighten it down and you just have to do that about 14 times. So the way the instrument is played is actually uh, fairly fun and interesting. So you get your fingers wet and you play the, gra the glass rods, almost like you're playing a wine glass. But in this case, instead of the glass itself producing the sound, the vibrations go into the metal rods that you can see that are vertical and uh, create, cause those to vibrate, which then gets spread out through the metal shelf on which it's all bolted to. Um, so the metal shelf acts like an amplifier in certain respects. And the, the glass rods are like a keyboard. So each one corresponds to a different note. In this case, uh, it's A minor, uh, which uh, classical people would kind of scoff at me for using the easiest key, but it was also based on the fact that the lowest note uh, I successfully tuned on this instrument was an A. So I just started working up from there. So the instrument sounds, this instrument in particular sounds like um, at times it can get as sweet as like a flute or a violin, but, but it also definitely has a growl to it. I, the, the resonator being made out of just sheet metal adds a, a gritty character to it that I really like. Um, and as you put more vibrations into it, it can sometimes do things like almost like overdrive, like a guitar pedal. So um, it's got a really interesting range of sounds from like really sweet sounds to very ethereal or alien or even very aggressive sounds. funny thing happened when I finished the instrument, I actually caught myself asking myself, well, what am I going to build next? <laughs> I sort of had to uh, slow down and be like, what you're going to do next is you're going to play this instrument that took eight months to build for at least that long. Uh, so I've played a few shows with this instrument. I'm still getting the hang of it. Um, still learning the voicing and, and things that it likes, it doesn't like. It definitely has its quirks, but like any, uh, you know, classical or serious instrument. It, it begs to have time put into it to get better at it and learn what it can do uh, more easily as well as the extremes it can be pushed to. So my plans for it are just to push it as far as I can.